All right, in this video, it's going to be a nice simple video and show you guys how to use a VST guitar plug-in and running it through your actual amp. I have the EVH 5150 6L6 50 watt amp and I also have a Focusrite TI4 model interface. Here's what the front looks like. Here's what the back looks like. These balance cables here are the ones we want to focus on, the quarter inch cables. These we won't really be using. And also you'll have a PC or a laptop or whatever you have your digital audio workstation on or also known as a DAW, D-A-W. In this video I have Fruity Loop Studio which I'll use for this example. And all you'll need is a guitar cable, a normal guitar cable going to your actual guitar. And you, you don't want to mess with these settings just yet until we plug everything in. But you'll also want another speaker cable or instrument cable works just as well. And you're going to plug in one of them to the back of the output on the balanced output sign, like so. And then on the other end, we're going to take this and plug it into the effects return on the EVH amp. So that'll be on the back. We won't have anything sending out. We'll only have this plugged into the return. And I'll show you guys a picture on the screen just so you guys can see it. So I have an output going from here, from the interface, going into the return of your tube amp or any amp you have that has an effects loop on there. So you want to put this into return. All right, so after you have that plugged in, you want to come over here. And after you have it plugged into your PC, you could plug it into your guitar, the instrument cable. And when you strum your guitar, you'll see I get some signal going through right there on that little channel one input. There's one and there's two. And you want to set this to instrument. And all these little pad buttons or whatever you have, just keep them off. For direct monitor, I just keep it on mono. I just keep this down since I don't use it. Put this to source one and two in case you do have a headphone jack. Just make sure it's according to whatever you're plugged into. And yeah, that's it. The monitor, you want to make sure you keep this a little low. You don't want to keep it all the way up in case some signal goes through the amp. You don't want to blow out your speakers or startle yourself. So here, what you want to do is strum your guitar. And you want to make sure it just doesn't turn red. If you see it turn red, like that, that's not a good sign. That's just too much input. So you want to find a sweet spot in where it only hits green. And you want to strum it hard, like you're going to play, even though you might not play metal, you still just want to strum it hard. Here it's turning your head, so let's turn it down a little. And that's about good right there. I'm strumming pretty hard and nothing's turning red. So that's good on there for that setup. Keep everything off here, this pad, the 48 volt, anything. And this is also important too. Whenever you're going to be using the VSTs and you're going to be hearing it, the back acts as a monitor. So this will be your volume from the interface. So if you keep this on input, you'll just be hearing your clean guitar without any effects from the PC or the dial station. So you want to put this all the way to playback. All the way to the right where it says there, playback. And just keep this around there, not too high. We'll adjust that later. So that's all the hardware set up you'll need on here. I'm going to show you guys on the computer here. I'll go to a screen recording and show you guys step by step. Downloading Fruity Loop Studio. It's all free. There are free trials where the VST plugins. So I'll give you a little tutorial on how to download them and where to put them. And it's pretty simple. I'll show you guys step by step and I'll give you a little sound demo on the end. And if you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll help you guys as much as I can on there. I'll reply to everybody. So let's hop in. Alright, so now we're on the computer here, or on your PC or MacBook. I'm going to go in order here on what websites we're going to choose. First one, FL Studio. This will be your DAO, which stands for Digital Audio Workstation. If you're on PC or a Mac, an Apple product, it'll work just as fine. You'll click on Try for Free, and then it'll ask you there where to download it and everything. And I already have it downloaded, so I don't need to do that, but everything's free. And after that, Whatever interface you have, you want, to, you want to make sure that you download the drivers for it. So in my case, I already have that downloaded, so I don't need to do that. But it doesn't have to be a Scarlet interface. It can be almost anything. So just make sure you check on your manufacturer's website, and you'll be able to find them all for free as well. 
So after that, we're on to NeuroDSP.com. And you'll see here, when you go to plugins, you can click on guitar if you like. But here's a bunch of amps. There's a couple amps from artists, like signature models. So I already had this one here, but it had a 14 day trial. So I cannot use this one. So I'm going to show you guys a fresh download, fresh from scratch and show you guys how to do it. So I'm just gonna start with this one right here. So I'll click on free trial. And it'll say here right away, you a Mac PC, In my case I'm on Windows PC. And right here some instructions that are very, very clear, but you want to make sure you follow through them. Let me move this aside. Say make sure you have an iLock license manager account. What this does, it just registers. This right here just registers your product in order to activate it so you could use it. Because if you do not have an iLock account, you will not be able to run the program in your digital workstation. It'll say installed, run the installer. And let's say here play and then you know put into DAL or DAW whatever but right now I got this pop-up right here and you can say archetype v1.00 on my desktop I already have a folder that's for VST plugins as you see in my license iLock license managers in there already so I'll just save it in there and I will start downloading down here it won't take too long depending on your internet speed so on my desktop I opened up my guitar VST plugins if you don't know how to make one, you can just right click on your desktop, you go to new, you go to folder, then you could title this folder VST plugins. But in my case, I don't need to do that since I already have one. But I'm just showing you guys it's easier to organize it instead of putting this all in your downloads. So let's run this up right here. It says you can double click it. So here you click next, it'll ask you to sign or to agree to the terms and conditions or anything like that. You click next. And it'll say select where. I just keep everything just the way it is. Click next. But back here, preparing the install, you could select where you want it to go. But you know, it's it's just by default because on your your Fruity Loop Studio right here, it'll recognize all the VST. So you click install. Depending on your internet speed, it won't take that long. All right, and my download finished, completed. We'll click on finish. And then right now your question may, your question might be, okay, now what do I do? I see the program here on my, my desktop, what do I do? So in this case, you have two options. For some people, people want to record their audio. So that's why we could use Fruity Loop Studio. Or there's another one called Reaper, which is very good as well. But in my case, FO Studio seems to be a little bit more easier for people to understand and to use just because the interface and everything looks a bit more the controls and everything seem more simple the reaper is very advanced so once you get used to FL Studio you're more than welcome to try reaper completely free I could provide a link in the description as well but right now for the archetype you could double click it and it'll open it up on your desktop and right now it says your activation is required so you'll click on try you don't want to click activate because if you click activate That'll take you to the website and it'll want you to buy it. But in this case, we're just going to try. And then you have an, I, an iLock account. You'll sign in with your user ID and password. Make sure it is verified. So you click on next. And right there, say so select a location. On oh, my case, is Danny's PC. I'll click it. It's already selected. You click on next. Take a little second. They say congratulations. It has been activated. So, all right, so once you open the archetype, you'll see right here, right off the bat, you will hear a lot of feedback noise coming from this so you just want to make sure you don't have any speakers or headphones plugged in all the way up but if that's the case quickly go to settings on the left corner right here and it'll say here, audio device input so you can click whichever one that you are activated on so if you got if you got your interface or anything like that you can just click it on here you can see focus right so go to focus right USB. And there if you type your or you hit your guitar, you'll hear a little bit of signal here. You can see right here the signal comes up. But we're not done yet. We still gotta mess around with the settings here. But let's just start from down here. You got your settings. You can choose all the settings that you want down here. Your input. Right here you have some MIDI mappings, but I'm not really into that. You also have a tuner, which is very, very useful. You can see I just strum, strum my E. 
So that's very useful as well. There's a metronome. You can just set up to almost anything. So that's pretty much what's down here. Down here are some other amps, which I have not yet to try. I'm literally brand new on this right now. But let's go up to the pedals. You have like wall pedals. You have compressors. You have some phasers, chorus, flanger. You have the amp itself. And you have the settings here, the microphones that you could choose. So you could try almost any microphone here. But in my case, I will turn these off in a minute to show you the setup. I'm just giving you the rundown on what it looks like. You also have an EQ, some other pedals, some other racks, I believe, here. Some reverb racks, which look really cool. But let's just get into the setup here because I know you guys, most of you guys that are watching are want wanting to play metal. With clean tones, you can pretty much get away with any of these settings and on, in, on the interface as well. But right now, let's give you a little rundown of the presets on the amp. So if we go down to click on the arrow right here, go to artist, and you see there are a bunch, I mean a bunch of different types of settings. They are the same amps, but they're just different settings. So you can just go around, you could be here for days and weeks finding a tone that you like. So there's the factory settings, there's this artist signature ones, there's a lot. So you can just play around here and find a tone that you like. So in my case, we're going to stick with this one here. Or we could just get a default one and just start from scratch just to show you guys. Alright guys, so just a quick reminder here on your interface. You want to make sure that your monitor level is low just to begin with. And same thing with your gain input. You want to make sure that it's not too high and make sure it's not turning red whenever you strum your strings. For the reason this being low is just to not startle yourself because this can be really loud. So just a, just a friendly reminder for you guys, that's plugged into the return on there. Just plugged into my guitar that's in my hands right now. So just a little reminder, I'm going to come back on here and I'm going to show you guys what it sounds like through my other microphone. And I'll just experiment with the settings and hopefully this guy this helped you out a little bit on finding your tone or just to experiment with. I think it's a lot of fun just because there's a lot of different amps on this little wet on this little browser here. Well, not browser, but these presets I should say. So I'm just gonna stick with the default one and just try this out with you guys. So let me go back onto the computer and just run down a couple of other things. But right now I have my noise gate, which is important to have. You wanna keep it around your sweet spot, whatever you find. So right now I'm just writing down the settings. Make sure you keep these microphones off over here. You do not want to keep these on because I can show you what it sounds like. It sounds very, just doesn't really sound right. It just sounds like digital. It just doesn't sound right. So if I turn those off, it sounds. Just sounds realistic. Here's some EQs. You can turn it on or off right here with the switch. You can tell if it's on because the little lights on the side. Turn them on. I'm just keeping this stock for now. I can mess with these later on, but I'll just keep those on. There's some pedals on here that I don't really need, so you can turn it on, off. I don't really need any of this. Same with these. Delay on, off, on, off. Don't really need them, but you could also add them. It's just personal preference. I'm just doing this as a dry demo to show you. But for me, it sounds really good on distortion. Here's my settings. I have the gain up, the tight a little bit, mid around 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock middle, uh, about 12 o'clock treble, presence around like 5 o'clock or 3 o'clock around there. It just doesn't matter really anywhere. Master volume and your level. These are also volumes. So you could just mess with these until you find something that fits well. On the interface, you also have another monitor volume button there. The one I showed you to turn down. That is pretty much like your main, main volume. So I would just stick with the interface volume because it, it can get really loud. So. so yeah, that's what I have set up to now. I'm not sure if you can really hear it on, the, uh, on this microphone that I have on my desktop here. But for me, I'm just going to keep it just the way it is for now. Alright, so we're going to jump back onto FL Studio here because you could also use the archetype on your desktop just to play around with. But if you guys actually want to record, then you will 
have to use a digital workstation for this. So in this case, I have FO Studio. When you open it up, this is exactly what you'll see. And if you don't, you can come up to these little tabs and just start clicking until you have the mixer and the little track icons here on the back. Because when you record, this is where your tracks will be laid out on. So if you've never used FL Studio, I won't get into too much detail. We can just watch some YouTube videos and just learn the basics of this, which is what I've done like five years ago. So I'm pretty familiar with it. But whenever you're on, you want to go to Options at the top left and go to Audio Settings. You'll see the device is on the focus right USB and that's all you want to set it as. You don't have to really mess with this unless you really know what you're doing. So I'll just keep it at this because it'll identify your input through here. So after that you can come up to here on your mixer board. So you see it'll say master. You got insert one, two, three. You got like what hundreds I think. Yeah you got like 125 and for the most part the most I've used was like five, to be honest. I haven't used a lot. So you'll click on your insert one. You don't want to click master. You want to click insert one. You come over to here on mixer. You click on the drop down. And you'll see right here you got your focus right USB. And wherever your guitar is plugged in on my interface, I'm on input one. So you'll click input one. And right off the bat, you might not hear anything just because I have my guitar turned all the way down, just not too right there if I strum it you could hear it actually it's actually coming through my amp because I have the whole setup with the cable plugged into the return of the amp so anything on my PC is actually going through my amplifier so you strum it you hear some sound obviously and what you want to do is turn down your guitar all the way just because you don't want to blast some loud audio that's about to come through here when you plug in your your download that VST so right now you have some sound which is good and if you don't just make sure you come up to the audio settings and make sure you selected everything accordingly by this point everything should be alright so you'll come over here you see you have slot 1, 2, 3 all the way to 10 here is where you can add some built-in effects so for example if you click right here on slot 1 anywhere on slot 1 you'll see a bunch of effects so you'll see you have EQs, you have reverbs, you have some limiters, compressors, you have a bunch of stuff that comes with Fruity Loop Studio. This is all free in there. So right now you will not see the archetype. You can see the previous one that I was using. But if you don't, you go to more plugins and you can just keep scrolling all the way down because that's where they usually go. But in my case, I'm glad it did not show up for me. You can see the old one on there. You don't You don't see it. So if you do not see it, you can go to Manage Plugins, like so, and then you'll come up to here where it'll say Find Installed Plugins, you click it, and this should do a refresh, so you will be able to see your plugin. Some people make files and they drag them into the, the program files on FL Studio, that is not really necessary, because on the program here, it'll just scan your whole computer for new VSTs that it finds that you downloaded. Alright, so after it scans, you can just exit out. And you're going to go to slot 1. And you'll hit up more plugins. And then now, you just scroll all the way down. And right here, you got it. There's another one I downloaded. And here's the archetype. So you could just drag it on there. You could just double click it easily. So, once you double click it, you'll get this window. If it's too big, you can go down to the right corner, just click large, or go to medium, just so it's not too big covering up everything. So, as I explained on the other desktop version, it's the exact same thing. Right now, you have this over here, archetype. You click it, and then you can just mess with your settings. So, like I said, you can turn these off, you don't really need them. And then here, you can just mess around with the amps. Same exact idea. Right, so whenever you want to record, you'll come up to this corner right here. It'll be a little red dot. You also have a metronome on here, but I'm not getting into too much detail on this. You can just watch some tutorials. So you'll click on record. It will not record right away. And then you'll click on everything. And sometimes a window will pop up on what you want to record. So you can also right click on this and it'll show you what you want to record. So I just keep it on what it is because I never had an issue with it. And you also right here, you'll see this little green counter. 
I'll just click on the very beginning, just like right there. So whenever you hit your space bar to record, you'll see there's a little line going through. So if I turn my guitar up a little bit and strum, it'll pick up all that frequency that's going through. So your space bar again, and there it is. This right here is your what you recorded. So if you want to hear it again, you just unclick the record button and you hit your space bar and you'll be able to hear to hear it. But in my case, you'll not be able to hear it that much because it's plugged into my amplifier. I can just turn it up for you. I can hear it loud and clear. It's working. It's going through all right. So there's some other little tips and tricks I like to do. I do control A, control C to copy and then control V. So there you have two of these. So you can just layer them on top of each other. And there's a lot of other little tricks and stuff that I learned from YouTube. So you can just research it and just play around and experiment until you find the sound that you want. So that's pretty much it for the video. I hope it helped you guys out a little bit. Please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions or something's not working out for you, please leave a comment. I'll help you out. I'll be more than happy to reply to everybody that comments. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.